Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, big shout out to William for the coffee. Uh, best coffee in Inverness, by the way, is from the Milk Bar or the Cup and Cone. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. This is the 2022 Advanced Hire. This actually is the 2022 Advanced Hire. I spent three years of my life last night redoing old papers and wondering why the questions looked familiar. I'm an idiot. You need to sack me and get yourself a much better chemistry YouTuber. So, let's have a look at this. By the way, um, first of all, don't watch this if you find this stressful at all. These answers are not guaranteed. I would welcome any comments pointing out my mistakes. I usually make at least two in a multiple choice. Uh, and I've got not got a marking scheme, so I can't guarantee these answers are correct. Not correct about emissions. Oh, I'm going to do this really quickly, by the way. I've pre-done the answers, um, so I'm just going to rip through them quickly. Not correct. That one there. Visible light doesn't promote electrons during emission spectroscopy. How many electrons in the highest energy subshell? Not sure about this one. Might come back to this one at the end. Because chromium, CR with no charge, is the weird one that does 4S1, 3D5 instead of 4S2, 3D4. So if you strip an electron out of that, I was thinking you should get 4S nothing. Oh, of course. You do get 4S nothing, and therefore there are five. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, going to go with that as an answer. Um, if you have an octahedral complex, that means there's six points. Each ligand attaches to two points, so that means you need three of the ligands. The charge is one minus for each ligand. The charge of them is two plus. It's D, basically. It's that one there. Number four, heterogeneous catalysts, not correct. They are not found in the same state. That's homogeneous catalysts. Number five, it took me a while to get this one. I was puzzled on this one. An element in a single substance is both oxidized and reduced. It's a halogen. So I was being stupid because eventually I realized that for D, chlorine starts off with an oxidation number of zero and it ends up being minus one and plus one in two different substances. So the answer, I think, is D. The only one that's true for neutral solutions um, at 325 Kelvin. Anyway, that's for sure. None of the others will apply, but this one always applies for neutral solutions. Same number of hydroniums as hydroxides. Number seven. Uh, I haven't done number seven for some reason. Let me pause and do seven. Okay, so you can't change the equilibrium constant with pressure. So therefore, we can throw these two out. And with three moles of gas here, two moles of gas here, are we increasing the pressure? Yes, we are. So therefore, you will drive to the right and you will increase the concentration. I'm going to go with A. Number eight, standard enthalpy of formation. You make one mole of substance, doesn't it help us? You make it from its elements, doesn't it help us? And they have to be in the normal states at room temperature and also the normal forms. So Cl2, you need a half, so it's D. Number 9 and 10, a, if it's second order with respect to A, single, first order with respect to B, then the only one that is there is true is that one. Number 10, the order of reaction. You can only get the order by experiment. You can't actually work it out in advance. Number 11, entropy question. This is a sneaky one. I like this one. Whoever wrote this question? It's a delightfully devious question because at first glance, there seems to be two right answers. But of course, the difference in entropy going from liquid to a gas which is what we've got here, is much larger than going from solid to liquid. So the answer is C, not D. Number 12, uh, this is sp3 hybridization, which is single bonds, and we want ethane, so triple bonds, so we're looking for C, which is sp1 hybridization. Number 13, which molecule contains only sigma bonds? You've got to have single bonds only, which is water. Number 14, you just have to know your alkene addition mechanisms. Uh, it's definitely not C or D because they involve a triangular intermediate, which is only true for bromines, not for hydrogens. So, uh, carbocation, but uh, the direction of electrons flows wrong for this one, so it's A. Phenyl group. Phenyl group is when a benzene ring is a substituent, but it's a hanger on effectively. No benzene ring, no benzene ring. Benzene rings, but two of them joined together, it's going to have to be D. Strange question, but we'll go with it. Number four, 16, sorry, it's a reaction sequence. Chlorobutane, yep, you can knock the cl two chlorobutane, you're going to knock the chlorine off, replace it with cyanol, and then hydrolyze that. You're going to get this molecule here, which is 2-methyl 
butanoic acid. One, two, three, four, butanoic acid. Number 17, systematic name. This Is this naughty of USQA? Do we have to know branched ethers? I was a bit stumped on this one. Until I realised you sort of work it out by default. <sighs> One, two, three, four. So the propane's wrong. So it's going to be butane. It's going to be methyl butane. But I was actually genuinely stumped as to whether... So that's wrong as well. Uh, these two. I was a bit stuck between these two. I've gone with this one. Because the ethoxy, that's the ethoxy group, is stuck onto the first carbon there. So it can't be too ethoxy. Sort of answer by default here, though, which is never a good answer. Um, it's never a good question, frankly, if you have to answer by default. Anyway, enough ranting. Back to this. I work out what's going on here. Uh, it's an equilibrium here. We've plucked off one of these H's plonked it onto there and reduced that down to two. There are only one of these where you can't do that, and it's this one here because there are no H's on either of these carbons. 19, non-superimposable mirror images. Which one has got a chiral, which one has an enantiomer, and it's got to have four different things attached to a carbon, so it's that one there. Number 20, empirical formula time. It's a ratio of one to two which we scale up to find 4 to 8, which is this here, isn't it? 2, 4, 6, yes it is. 21, sorry, rustling in your ear there, 21. Uh, yeah, it's, these GFMs for the last two were wrong, they were 72 for the GFM, not 74. Um, and I worked out what the chunks at 31 and 43 are, and the one that fits best is B. I think, of course, feel free to correct me. In the comments below if I've made any mistakes. Entirely possible. After all, I spent two hours answering the wrong damn paper last night. Uh, the formula of malic acid. Oh yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, sodium carbonate. If you do a balanced equation for sodium carbonate with a normal acid, you find you require two hydrogen ions for every one sodium carbonate. And malic acid is a dicarboxylic acid. So for normal acids like hydrochloric acid, you need two moles of this for every one mole of this. But because there are two acidic hydrogens, I'm reckoning we only need one mole of malic acid for every one mole of sodium carbonate. And we've got 0 0.05 moles of sodium carbonate, sorry, of malic acid. So I think you'll need 0 0.05 moles of sodium carbonate. Correct me if I'm wrong. This one here, you're a bright bunch, so you probably find a better way of doing this. But I, it was pure donkey work for me. I simply looked at the ratio of the mass of the calcium chloride to the mass of the water, given the 1 to 2 ratio here, and I worked out how many moles of calcium chloride were in each of these, scaled it up here, so 1.9 grams, worked out X grams of water, and then added that back to that until I achieved this mass. But that seems a really dumb way of doing it. If you've got a better way, please tell me. Anyway, I came out for B with the answer, I think. 24 was a sneaky question. I quite like 24. Whoever wrote 24 is a clever question because you got to purify and identify a compound in a single step. Now, that's purification only. That's uh, purification only. That is determination only. So that's identification. But this one here uh, will both separate two liquids and also enable you to measure the boiling point. So it's distillation for that one. 25 is another sneaky question. I like this one. Who wrote this question? It's a clever one. It's a logic question. And I'm going to come to the conclusion that if that's the stuff we started with, um, C is a mixture of... C doesn't really tell you anything, but S tells you... Um, what does S tell you? you have, there's no guarantee it's not getting purities because you don't know what this is. You don't know that this is what you're trying to make. So therefore, you can't say that D is true. Um, and you can't even say that C is true either. If that's not your desired product, it might not be. And maybe that blob is an impurity. So the only thing you can say for sure is that you've got no more reactant because there's a ghost spot there. And I think we're done. Thank you.